Hello Booktube, I'm here to talk about uh, this book here that I did with Buddy Read with a number of other uh, Booktubers. Uh, we have a Buddy Read, Buddy Rude? Buddy, well it was, there was rudeness with this, but anyway, uh, we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Buddy Reads, uh, with a number of Booktubers that were part of the New World's November and it was suggested by uh, Nathan at uh, the Rambling uh, Reviewer. And uh, there was a number of us that, uh, that decided to read it. Um, uh, yeah, and it's, it's two uh, novellas, or novelettes, uh, called, it's called Diamond Dogs, and then Turquoise Days is the second one. Uh, it's by Alistair Reynolds, and it's set in the, his Revelation Space universe. <clears throat> and this was published in 2002-2003 uh, in the UK, and this is the third impression, um, 2003, so it clearly sold quite well. And it was kind of weird, because I ordered a paperback of it. I got it really, really cheap. Uh, I wanted to read this because I wanted to read more of Alistair Reynolds. I've read Revelation Space. That's all uh, around two, 2015-ish. And I enjoyed it. Uh, so I jumped at the chance to do this. But it was it was interesting. As I say, I ordered a, you know, £2.50 or something like that or less than £3 paperback. Not expecting much. And it, it comes a little hardcover, which was quite nice. Uh, but also, too... As an additional thing, it's a sewn um, hardcover, which is rare these days. Like, it's not cloth-covered. It's paper-covered boards. But anyway, <clears throat> it's very similar <clears throat> to the uh, 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 the paperback cover, except it's sort of the, the ship is flipped uh, in some way. I think it points the other direction. Uh, but anyway, as I say, it's two novellas. Set in the Revelation Space Universe, Diamond Dog starts out uh, in Chasm City, a, a city, and I think that's the name of the possible second book of Revelation Space. Uh, but this time, uh, there's characters. I, well, I'm assuming that that show up in other, other, uh, other novels of his as well. Uh, but they, they, they're, it's it's a bit of an adventure story that there's a spire, a tower. On this uh, <clears throat> on this planet, where um, it, it's 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 built by aliens, but n nobody knows wh who who built this. But it's it's it, it's where every time you go into a room to get to the next room, you've got to solve a mathematical puzzle. And it increasingly gets more difficult. And if you make a mistake, uh, like as the characters say, you get punished. And the, the punishment goes from like, you know, something very mild to, you know, dicing and slicing, uh, basically. So there's one guy, he, he figures there's a treasure, like if you can get to the top. So he assembles a team. And uh, part of the team is a psychopathic, basically. Um, a cybernetist, and he wants like he's changed himself, and he's changed other people. There's a history with him that uh, we don't know from this story, but maybe in in other books. Uh, he's an interesting character because he's like, oh, can I change you? Can I change you? <laughs> and I I I, re I really like that about the character. Uh, there were some things like what he uh, what he did in the end. Uh, it was just too absurd for me. Uh, it just didn't work. Um, you know, maybe maybe that fits in with something else of his character that came before. I don't know, but it, within the internal <clears throat> way of the story, it was just a too too absurd for me. And there was another thing at the beginning where I rolled my eyes because I I I, I get tired of seeing this stuff in science fiction. It's it like invariably it's set in the future way in the future at times and then for some reason somebody is interested in the past and it just happens to be the 20th century and as if 
yeah, it just didn't didn't quite work. But anyway, it's not that somebody's interested in it. In this case, there was a ref there was reference to to um uh <clears throat> to uh the Indiana Jones film and the Canadian science fiction sort of um thriller, I guess whatever, cube. Uh so and I just I, I roll my eyes when I see that, you know. But I do understand why people do this, uh, because it is familiar for the audience, uh, you know, the readers. It's familiar for, uh, to them, and they can relate to that rather than, you know, set, you know, 20,000 years in the future and somebody fixated on something that was 10,500 years before that, which is obviously in the future, and you've got to create something. But to me, that makes it a little more interesting uh, when that's done, when it's rarely done. <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah, so there's this team that goes through room for room, and um, I won't sort of, it's, it, there's really not much to spoil with this, but uh, I won't sort of give you the ending or anything like that, but it, it was a fun, it was a fun story to read, uh, <clears throat> um, and like there's clearly aliens in this universe, I, like you see, I don't know the whole background with stuff. But there is an aliens uh, that's been was referred to in there called jugglers, <clears throat> and they show up in the second story, turquoise days. And again, there's that roll eye thing of of reference, and there's like a quote from a Echo in the Bunnyman song um, uh, at the beginning of the. Uh, um, here it says to sail in those turquoise days, Echo and the Bunnymen. And it's like, oh, come on. <clears throat> anyway, uh, those are little pet peeves for me uh, on this. But this one is set. It's hard to say whether it's it's before or after. I'm, I'm assuming after because it comes after in the book, uh, the first one. But there, it has to do with these these alien sort of microscope mic, uh, microbe um, intelligence. Uh, called jugglers and um, they are they, they live on a planet called turquoise and they live in the water there and they will inhabit uh, people that are swimming <clears throat> under certain circumstances and actually take them on fully and sort of subsume their whole body and everything except something called uh, their worm uh, which that just absolutely confused me because uh, I don't know what that is because this one uh, character she disappears and gets subsumed uh, with these jugglers and her sister says all that was left was her worm uh, no idea <clears throat> that that confused the hell out of me basically but um, it wasn't um, I wasn't too enamored with them, to be honest. Uh, I know other, uh, 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 my fellow readers, a uh, few of them really liked it, but I didn't care for them too much. But they're, they're typical, I guess, of sort of supplementary material that is set in a universe because they don't have, they're just sort of side stories. And that's all it is, is a side story. And... There's nothing, you know, whoop de doo about them as far as I can tell. Uh, and there's actually things that detract uh, from from it as a story for me. But, uh, but yeah, otherwise he writes well enough. And I do want to reread Revelation Space and read the other stories in Revelation Space. Or at least give it a try and see how far I get. So, anyway... Um, so this is my second foray uh, into the works of Alistair Reynolds. As I say, may not have been the best thing to to sort of reacquaint myself with him. Uh, but uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, has anybody else read Alistair Reynolds? Uh, this is me trying sort of some newer science fiction. And even though this is 2000, this is, this is newer for me. Um, so anyway, uh, I guess, yeah, that'll be it. And I'm not sure. It'll be in the new year, I think, when I start reading uh, the Revelation Space books. Uh, I don't have any timeline for these. Uh, might be some buddy reads, but uh, but yeah. 
Let me know what you think. Take care, Bob, too.